We're going to model a cart similar to this in Blender 2.8, but we'll make a few modifications so that it's a little bit more personalized. Okay, so here I am in Blender 2.8, and I'm going to select everything and delete. I'm going to look from the top down, and I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh, Plane, go into Edit Mode, and we're going to scale this in the X. scale a little bit more in the X and I'm going to scale it also in the Y. I'm going to rotate around a bit and hit E to extrude and pull up to make some planks for the floor. Okay, let's put on a bevel modifier. Choose bevel. I'm going to go for two segments but I'm going to reduce the width and I'm going to hold shift and just get it so there's a little bit of a bevel on there maybe even a little bit less than that all right let's add another modifier a rave modifier in the x and let's go for six look down from top view grab it and move it to the middle like this okay cool I'm going to go ahead and Shift D, copy it, pull it out, delete the array, and take the whole piece and move it out. I'm going to scale this in the Z now like this. It's a bit thicker there. Okay, I've got that one piece. I'm going to copy that over to the other side. Have a look at that. Take the whole thing, scale this in the X, make it narrower. And that's our main piece right there. Cool, okay. Now we're gonna make the side rails. So I'm gonna take this piece, Shift T, and I can look from the side by pressing three or Control three. I'm gonna pull it up as high as you want it to be for the side railing. And we don't want it that long, we want it about maybe halfway. So I'm going to press 3 to go into face selection and grab that face. And look from the side again and pull it back. I can come back to there, maybe a little bit further. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we got that. Great. All right. Uh, Shift D to copy that piece. There it is. Let's rotate X90. And we're going to push that down and so it goes into there, but we're going to make it narrower. I'm going to do that in edit mode, scale in the X. It's going to be narrow like that. We'll scale a bit in the Y. And then I'll take that face and I'll push it underneath. We'll get rid of, of excess faces later on. With that piece selected, I'm going to go to object, set origin, origin to geometry, and put my transform tool right in the middle of that. I still think it's a little bit wide, so I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to S Y and do that. Okay, because I've been making some changes to it, I'm going to go Control A and apply rotation and scale. Add modifier array, and we're going to go in the Y direction now. I want it back here. Put X to zero, and I want four of these. I think I want a little bit more space. So I will do that kind of thing. Okay. If I think that's a bit high, I can adjust that. All right, very nice. Let's take that and Shift D to copy it. I'll just move it out of the way and let's get rid of the array again. So I got just that piece. And I want to make this piece a little bit narrower so it looks like it fits. Let's scale this in the X so it looks like it would fit in there. We can also scale that in the Z. I'm going to bring it into position. I'm also going to scale it in the Y. Now, okay. And from the side view, let's pull it down. Let's rotate this in the X so that it looks like it fits in there. Good. All right. Let's set the origin to geometry for that piece. Shift D to copy it, pull it over here. And let's rotate this in the X so that it looks like it fits in here. 
and just adjust the position. It doesn't have to be the exact same angle. There we go, beautiful. Let's take all of this stuff, select everything, and let's move it to the other side. Shift D to copy it, and I'm gonna look from the top and place it over there. Very nice. Now we got this piece here. I think we're gonna apply the array and object, set origin to geometry. So transform tools right in the middle again. Shift D to copy this stuff. And let's rotate this. Let's rotate Z90. And then let's rotate X90 so that it stands up. Pull this back. And look from the back. And I'm going to hit S to scale. I'm going to slide that into place. I want it right in the middle of these things so that it looks like it bolts onto them. I could go like that. That'd be all right. Okay. Mm hmm. Very nice. Let's um, go into edit mode for this and select a piece of it and then go control L. That will get what's linked to it. Just that board there. And let's shift D to copy it, pull it out. And let's break it out of this by going P by selection back into edit mode and we now have that piece separated let's set the origin of geometry for that we'll go to edit mode and I want to scale this in the Y and make it a bit thicker I want a support beam here and it's actually gonna be a scale in the Y I want it longer than this scale in the Y so that it looks like it covers it, but I'll make it shorter. And put it up top like this. Let's see how that's looking. I'm going to take that piece, Shift D, I'm going to bring it down. actually make it uh, a little bit shorter than these so it looks like it attaches to there mm. well let's see scale in the X go, it goes to there mm. I think it's gonna have to go into these let's have a look at the reference so those don't really exist there. Um, we have this piece back here. It goes like that. Maybe we'll make these shorter. Let's select these back faces. Let's try pulling them under. And then we'll take this, take that piece and pull it down. I think that maybe might look a little bit better. Just like that. And um, maybe we'll do a similar thing with this and make it a little bit longer. Okay. And if we don't like the position of that, we can we can adjust it like that. Okay, I think I'm actually going to pull this out. Yeah. And then we're going to make some supports there. So let's just take this piece, Shift D, rotate Y90, and then we'll adjust the size of this. Scale this in the Y nice and thin. Pull it back. So that it goes like that. So now we can take this top part. Pull it down under. Select it all. Slide it over. And I think we'll need, we'll need to take this face and pull it up a bit. Okay. We'll take that. Look from the back. 
and shift D and we'll just copy it over to the other side a similar distance so that we get that all right it's time to start uh, getting rid of uh, excess faces so let's go into wireframe and select the top faces and the bottom faces X faces we'll do that and just go around and start doing that this guy in wireframe that end and this end X faces because they're not going to be showing so we don't need that uh, let's go back to solid view that we can do the same on this you can go shift H to hide everything except that and we can select all these faces and delete them okay go back in object mode alt H to bring everything else back okay so that let's look at these guys shift H yep we have the tops on still so let's get rid of these top faces so there's that one i guess this is right top and the bottom faces to do it for all of them and we'll do the same on the other side you could have done this before you copied uh, shift h the top and the bottom faces alt h to bring everything back now let me do that one let's check it out Nope, not yet. So we'll go like this. Get rid of those faces. And what about this one? We did that already. Okay, so this is what we have so far. It's looking a little bit long to me, and there's something else I want to do anyhow. So let's uh, here. Let's select a different one. Let's look from the top and in wireframe everything deselected B to box select just drag across there and you can get that I'm gonna pull it back to about there all right deselect and uh, let's do the same for for these okay so in wireframe deselect box select and I'm gonna pull it back I want it just a little bit ahead of that I'm gonna use that white line as a guide roughly like that do the same with this one. And just box select that. Bring it back. Again, not worrying about if it's perfectly in line. That's more of what I was looking for. Okay. All right. We're gonna make the front part now. This thing here. And the way I'm gonna do that is. Let's look down from the top. Let's select that. Actually, let's move everything just a little bit more in line with the middle there. All right. Okay. And that wasn't necessary, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to set the origin of geometry. Make sure it's right in the middle. I'm going to go Shift S. Cursor selected. My 3D cursor is right in the middle as well. Deselect. Okay. All right. Shift A. Mesh. Plane. So there's my plane. Bring it up. I bring it forward and look from the top go into edit mode one for vertices and to deselect I'm going to select just these two and delete those so I've got just this one and this one I'm going to bring them close to the middle all right take this point pull it back all right so let's have a look at this so it kind of comes out relatively straight and it curves and goes around like that so let's make that okay so I've got two points this one and this one's really gonna extend back underneath the unit and I've got this one all right I'm now gonna hit E to extrude and G and I'm gonna pull out to maybe about there let's see how wide this thing is it's not very wide well the extreme comes out to about here so yeah, that's good enough E to extrude again and come forward a ways. We can adjust these lengths in a bit. So I've got that. All right. I'm going to select it all and bring it down so that it looks like it would go underneath the unit. Okay. 
uh, let's uh, deselect now and select just these points here. We're going to give it a little bit of a curve like this. So right now it's very sharp. So I'm going to go with those selected, the shift control B and then a pull. And that's going to separate the points a little bit. Roll my mouse up one to put one more vertice in there. And that's probably curved enough, just like that. A to select it all. E to extrude, and let's pull up in the Z direction to give it some height. Select it all, and now we're going to try E Alt S and C. Now, if it goes all weird, what we're going to do is with it all selected, let's go to Mesh, Normals, Recalculate outside. Let's try again E and Alt S, and now it's behaving nicely. You're going to hold Shift to move slower. I'm just creating a thickness like this. All right, let's deselect. And with my 3D cursor still right in the middle, add modifier, mirror. You get one on the other side. And that's okay. Let's pull it all down. We're going to keep the mirror on we'll add a subdivision surface of one we'll go in and let's add an edge loop control R and pull to near the front like this and let's look down from the top control R pull an edge loop this way control R click and pull like that you don't have to go right to the end We can also do them on the side. Control R and pull up. Control R and pull down. That should just about do it. We can go W, or uh, not W, but uh, right click and shade smooth. And that is our piece right there. Now, this end, we can come in and we can delete the back faces. We're not going to see underneath there anyhow. Press 3. Click there, and we've got some edge loops. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Press the period key to zoom in. We can go Control Plus, X, Faces. Let's do, we got both of them because it's mirrored. Good. Very nice. Very nice. Let's save once in a while. Wooden cart 2.8. All right, now we need to make the this piece here. And then before we do that, I think I'll take this piece, shift D, we'll bring it down towards the front. I'm going to put it in there, go into edit mode. I'm going to hit S to scale. And we'll make it so it looks like it it's fits and it's a support. Let's scale this in the Z so it fits in. And you see that the ends are open, so we'll go uh, Shift Alt and click that edge, and F to make a face. Come around, Shift Alt and click that edge, F to make a face, and we'll come back out and we'll have a look at that. Uh, I kind of wanted a bit more square, so scale in the Y. And it's moving a bit weird because my transform origin is right there. That's all right. Very nice. Maybe it's two scale in the Y. It's a little bit too narrow for me. All right, cool. 3D cursor is still right in the middle. So look from the front and yeah, shift A, mesh, circle. Let's add a circle and let's put it as 22 vertices. All right, let's rotate X 90 and go into edit mode and then scale so that it looks like it touches the posts there. Let's switch to one vertex selection, and I'm going to move it up so we can see what we're doing right in front. Okay, deselect and B to border or box select. I'm going to get rid of all of these vertices right to there. X vertices, and then we've got this. Let's pull it down. So it looks like it contacts there. Pull it back. Okay, so we're shaping this out and attaches to there. Let's hit E to extrude and pull it out like that. So
select it all and let's try E Alt S and pull or push so you get the thickness you want I want a little bit thinner than this so let's select it all and then view from the front and let's hit S to scale and pull it in we can pull it down so it looks like it's in contact scale again until you get the size you like all right let's now uh, go into just this let's isolate it shift H and let's get rid of press 3 get rid of these bottom faces because they're not going to be seen all right back in object mode and alt H and for this guy let's set the um, transform tool right there so object set origin origin and geometry okay we are going to put a subdivision surface on this and then we'll go into edit mode and we'll put an edge loop on the top near there and there and on the side there and there and on the other side and maybe we'll put them on underneath not there though underneath control r and pull and that is a lot but right click shade smooth and we have that piece it's one other thing that I like to do with this and that is I like to select um, every other edge loop so I'm skipping one and I'm just grabbing those okay control B pull back if you have any segments in there roll your mouse up and down till there's nothing Make a small space like that, and then E and then Alt S and push in. And that will create some little grooves. We'll tighten that up by bringing in edge loops close to the end, close to the edge, close to the little depression part there. Just like that. And this will sort of simulate the grain of the wood a little bit, or the, yeah, we'll call it the grain. There we go, just like that. All right, so it looks a little bit like, like those lines in there, in a cartoony kind of a way. So we got that piece. Now, is that long enough? If we, yeah, I hope it's long enough. Well, I think we could, uh, well, if we needed to, we could pull this out. And probably the best place to do it is in wireframe, not there. Wireframe, let's grab that part and pull it forward like that. And then you take this piece, slide it up. This one can move if you want, up to you. All right, there we go. Okay, look a little shrimpy to me. I might scale this in the Z. Now, it's moving weirdly, so let's set the origin to geometry, and then we'll scale in the Z and it ought to work a little bit better and unfortunately what I did <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's a mirror on this and so what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply the mirror and now I can set the origin of geometry for this thing and whether I do this in object mode or edit mode doesn't matter I can just do that And then I may have to position all these things a bit differently. It's not bad. <clears throat> Great. Let's uh, take this piece here. Actually, no, let's use this piece. Shift D and bring it back. And I'm just going to scale this up like this. 
skeletons in weren't thicker than these I'm touching the bottom so it looks like they attach and then I'll take this and let's go flip from the front to the back let's scale this in the axe so there's too small there's just about right alrighty so it looks like it attaches to that and holds that a little bit do another one if you want a bit weird. What we could do is we could take this, scale this in the Z, maybe like this, so we could scale it in the X, and then go into edit mode and put two edge loops. Roll your mouse up, scale in the X, and then we'll do this. And uh, no, e, e, face selection, grab those two faces, E to extrude, pull them down a ways, select the whole thing, and let's rotate X 180 to turn it around. Let's push it up and see, let's see what I'm getting at. All right, let's bring it down and let's just lengthen it and delete those faces. Take the whole thing, push it up. Okay, and if would go like that basically hopefully it doesn't come through the floor and I got that piece and then from there you could scale this in the X if you wanted to make it tighter you'd have that on the point out that's going to be seen anyhow all right I'll show you how I would make the wheels I'll just leave my 3d cursor there I'm going to take this piece shift D move it out a little bit rotate y90 you're going to make the wheels out of some wood scale that down a bit and just find a position that you would make your wheel okay this dot is the middle so the wheel will be roughly in that position okay let's shift s cursor selected bring my 3d cursor right to the middle of that thing and bring in another circle same uh, number of vertices, rotate Y90 and scale. I'll bring it out in front so we can see it and look from the side. And that's my wheel. And I can, I can move it down if I want to. I want my wheel to be a little bit smaller than these planks here because I want to put those planks in the middle. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to bring the circle out a bit and go into edit mode and E to extrude, I'm gonna pull it back. Now if that happened, it's because I'm in face selection and there's no faces, so just switch to some like edge. Okay, E to extrude and then pull it in. All right, I want to shift alt and click that and F, make sure there's a face on there. I don't think I need one on the back though. Before I go any further, I wanna copy this. Shift D, pull it out and P, separated by selection i'm going to be using this piece later let's set the origin to the ge geometry of that piece back to this piece all right i want the wood planks to be inside the wheel and the way i'm going to do this is i'm selecting that cylinder like thing and i'm going to come over to modifier boolean make sure i'm not on difference but on intersect and with the eyedropper choose the wood planks that's going to go all weird click apply choose the wood planks x delete and you have this all right now i'm going to take this piece i'm going to bring it back to around the middle but before i do that i'm going to go into edit mode and press three I'm going to face selection x delete only faces two i still have this edge all right now from the top i'm going to bring it over all right, E to extrude, and I'm going to bring it out wider than the planks. I can scale it in just a little bit, and then E, Alt, S, and pull or push until we get a bit of a, a rim like that. All right, and we've got the wood inside. Let's smooth this subdivision surface. One is probably good enough. Edge loops now in edit mode put one over here and one over here and then we'll come in on the side and we'll 
put one up and put one down. And we'll right click Shade Smooth. And if you need to, you can always go to uh, two subdivisions. I've got sub two on the render and two in the viewport. And we have this. Three cursor should still be in the middle, I believe. And anyways, we're gonna take this. I'm gonna go in and select any of these edges, Shift, Alt, and click. And then I'm gonna go Shift, D, and S to scale. Bring it down and make a little circle in the middle. E to extrude, pull it out. E, S, pull it in. And then to fill that up, to fill it in, I'm gonna go Mesh. Uh, is that it? No, Face. Grid Fill. And choose maybe two. Deselect. We'll come back here. Shift Alt and click that edge. And Control B. Pull back. Roll your mouse up one. And we'll come out. And make sure we shade smooth. So we have that little piece there. Now, it's laying off of the wood. So I'm going to go back in and select a little piece of it. Control L. We'll get it all, and now we'll just push it back until it looks like it makes contact. There we go, just like that. Okay, and there's your, your wheel. You can put any other designs that you want in there. You can also take that, and we can rotate that in the X if you want it not perfectly straight. So let's select that in the wood, and let's bring the wheel in a bit maybe there shift D we'll bring it over to the other side but we'll rotate Z 180 and then we'll pull it out and there's our there's our cart at this point, you can make any adjustments that you you want, if, if you want to make some. Cool. We can put a wood texture on this. Um, it's up to you how you do this. Let's uh, just look from the front here and pull our little wagon up cart whatever from the side that's looking nice all righty let's go shift c bring 3d cursor right back to there save all right so let's uh let's try this let's go into shading and um let's Add a material to this. My node editor is down here. I'm going to new material and um, let's join that. Bring that up. Okay, so here's my node editor and I've got a principled shader there. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that, Shift D, and bring it over, Shift S. And I'm going to switch this to um, a wave texture. All right. So I need a few things. Uh, I'm going to copy that, Shift D. And I'm going to Shift S and switch this to Mix RGB. I'm going to connect color to FAC and color to base color there. And I'm going to get that so far. Uh, not that much <laughs> of what we need um, I'm gonna take this color and I make it a brownish kind of color you start to see something going on you can go with any colors you like for this and I'm gonna color pick there and I'm gonna make this darker and redder let's just mess around with this okay let's look from the top so here's what we have. I'm actually going to switch this over to rings. All right. And 
then I'm going to do a couple of other things. All right. So um, we're going to take this and go Control T to put down the mapping nodes. And I'm actually going to use UV to vector, which means I have to UV unwrap this. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to select it all and I'm going to go U smart UV project and just accept the defaults. So I get this. It's not quite what we want yet. So now I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to go for about 1.2 distortion of maybe 25 and scale of 10. Let's try that. And it starts to look like wood. Now this is a very cartoony look, which is a look that I like. I'm not trying to make this look realistic. All right. Now let's go into here, select it, go U, Smart UV Project, accept, and on materials, where's my materials there? Just choose that material. Now, you may get different sizes here. So what you can do is you can take this and you can experiment with this size until you get what you like. Let's say, let's say you like that <laughs> as what you can then come into this one. All right. We already UV unwrapped it. Let's see if I can find it over here. Let's go um, v, uh, here, UV image editor. You can select this and then hit S to scale and pull it in or pull it out. So you get something that looks maybe similar to that if that's what you are going for. Let's do this one. U Smart UV Project. Make sure we assign that material. Have a look at that. Okay. This one I could scale as well. Smart UV project and the material. Let's just leave that that size for now. U smart UV project and the material. Same for these. Select. Just really simple way of doing it. It's not overly realistic as we said, but it looks like a cart and it looks very cute. Let's do this stuff. Select U, Smart UV Project, Material. Just repeat. If you want the same wood. Yes, yes, yes. project this piece okay skipping that for a minute let's do this okay that looks all right You, of course, can just copy uh, the wheel over or other planks so that you don't have to redo this every time. A couple pieces at the back still to do.
Smart UV project works pretty well for these. Okay. Mm, now this one, we may have to, we can try just Smart UV project. And it may not work very well. Well, what happens is we get the grain going like that, which is okay in a cartoony kind of a way. Okay, and then um, now I haven't been changing the size of the wood grain, you know. So exact again for this kind of stuff, you could take it and you could scale it. It's just well, be careful. All right, and you get you get that. Um, you can still adjust. The, the this this kind of stuff if you want still um, try different amounts of distortion all right the effect that, that you want once again cartoony look and for this just just make a material and maybe make it dark I mean that's up to you how what you want to do maybe 0 0.1 for metallic and that's what I would do anyhow And that's your, that's your basic cart right there. With a cartoony look of procedural wood that you can change without having to get somebody else's image texture on there. Do your own thing. All right, experiment. Um, you can also, on this, uh, you can um, reduce the roughness a bit. To give a bit of a shine and then you can easily like I said you can easily come in here and sit and and change everything you know for a different a different look all right so there's the cart